So today I'm going to talk about mobile AR in 10 minutes. When I was making this talk, I realized that 10 minutes is very short for what AR can do today. So I will try to make it very short, very informative. But if you have any questions after the talk, uh, feel free to contact me. A um, little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Christina. Uh, I'm independent Android consultant. Uh, I also do Unity development. That's how I know a little bit about AR Core and iOS, uh, iPhone development. And you can find me on Twitter uh, here. Uh, so let's see what are the main players, players on the market at the moment. Uh, we have four available SDKs that I want to say that there are top four, but of course there are many others. Um, AR Core and AR Kit uh, were introduced in 2017 and 2018 and took the market very quickly. Uh, Vuforia and Wikitude uh, were at the market for a long time and they are very good competitors. They have a lot of good features. Comparing to AR Core and AR Kit, they are the same, but you have uh, big bots that you have to buy a license. Uh, and especially for Wikitude, the license can be a little bit costly, around $4,000. And for a Unity, or for, um, if you just want to prototype, if you want to just put the app in the store, you really don't want to pay that much money uh, just for testing. So let's talk about AR Core and AR Kit. Uh, those are the most popular options, and I think most of all because, first of all, they're supported by Google and Apple, and second of all, because they're free. And we have a lot of resources nowadays uh, if you have any problems and tutorials as well. And when AR Core and AR Kit were introduced, especially AR Core, not many devices were supporting AR. Now we have more than 250 million devices, and this includes both iPhones and Androids. And also AR Core is available both on Android and iOS devices. So I will skip marker-based AR that is like old school AR, how it all started, and I will go to markerless AR. Uh, you can just put any object uh, in your living room. And like, let's be a snowman or a sofa or anything, and you see how it looks in your room. How does it work? So our uh, phone is using the sensors and the camera to understand the interest points and features and build their own like digital twin of this environment. And of course, when you see a lot of demos like in keynotes for AR, everything works fine, everything is stable, and you feel like, yes, I'm going to do this. But you have to be aware of, you have to have a good environment. Uh, the light is very important. So AR will not work very good. The tracking will not work if your room is dark uh, or if just it's slightly a little bit light there. So be aware you have to have a good light. Let's say you have a, a, a customer that's coming to you and they want to have an proje AR project in the museum in a dark room. Uh, and you will not be able, probably you will not be able to do markerless AR there. So be aware of that. And also textures. Uh, what do I mean by that? So we need some interest points. It means that uh, connection between two colors or the texture should be different. So if you're in the white room with white floors, white ceiling, white walls with no pictures, AR will not work. Uh, light estimation is very important, and both ARKit and ARCore made very good progress this year. Uh, they now use environmental um, light estimation, and as you see here, it's ARCore demonstration of, of how good the, lightning, the light estimation is. And the second picture was shown on Google I.O., and half of the audience, they picked the wrong one when they were asked, which one is fake and which one is real money can. And I picked the wrong one. <laughs> and uh, that's saying that we are very, uh, we are there for making our AR experience very realistic. 
The other thing that is only available now on ARKit, and I hope it will be available on AR Core soon, is 3D object recognition. Why do we need that? Here's the example. We have a Lego kit, uh, and Lego uh, made this game. So your kit will make this Lego set. You take the phone, you recognize it, and then you can play a game and you can overlay this 3D object with fire and maybe other minions uh, running around. So it's a nice experience. But there is, again, <laughs> you have to scan it first. And again, also the object should have different textures. It will work very badly if this raccoon would be only one color with no other colors, like only black or only white. Uh, s and be aware also that, okay, you have to scan it, so you have to go there and do it physically. And you might have a challenge to do it if uh, you have a museum again, and it's closed in the area where you don't have access to. And yeah, you should consider that when, again, you say to, co to the customer that it's possible when the customer is showing you something like this. So share there is another super exciting experience that also is now available on both AR Core and AR Kit. AR Core got first with this feature last year, and but AR Kit 3 uh, is now available with shared AR. It means that we can do multiplayer games uh, and share the experiences with our friends, like here Tic Tac Toe, both. Uh, both users can see the same experience. Before, we had to share one phone and do it on one device. Now we can share it. And that's a good setting, like, for example, if you want to demonstrate, like, construction site, and people can do on their own. They walk around and they experience what you want to show them. Uh, face tracking. Uh, also, both ARKit and ARCore have face tracking, and as before, uh, maybe you know Snapchat filters, and it was really hard to do face tracking and f like something like that because you had to implement OpenCV. Uh, it's probably C++, and then you're in hell. And now it's just maybe five lines of code. Uh, of course, you have to be a little bit creative with the masks. So maybe you should hire a designer or well, m be a designer yourself. And, well, you can do it now in five lines of code. And my next project will be to, to do a supporter masks, like, let's say, your football supporter, and you just want to have a Norwegian flag uh, as your face mask. And the other thing that just got introduced this month by ARKit 3 is people occlusion. For many of you that is not working with AR, you don't see what's wrong with this or what is good with this. Um, so the person is real, and the coffee machine is virtual, artificial, uh, or virtual, yes, it's a 3D object. So this is how it looks now with ARKit 3, and it's yet not available on AR Core. But that's how it looks, or it looked before ARKit 3, and how it looks at, on AR Core still. So people occlusion is, we understand, our camera understands that here's the person and the, the coffee machine actually should be uh, behind him. Yes. And these kind of experiences make AR uh, not very realistic. So I'm very excited that uh, ARKit introduced this feature now. And we will make, with both good lighting and uh, people occlusion, better experiences. And I'm waiting for AirCore to introduce the same. And a little bit bonus. Uh, on Google I.O., uh, Google introduced how we can use AR uh, in the web browser and how we can just uh, browse any 3D object from the search results. And they also said it's very easy. And that's true. That's very easy. What you should do is, so usually, to view a 3D model, you use the first line, the third line, and the fourth line. And now to, to be able to view AR in your search results, you just add AR, and that's it. 
and you have experience like that. Um, pretty easy uh, to make, to experience, and this is based on AR Core Sand Viewer. So by doing this, you can also experience what are the shortcomings of the technology as well. So that's a small investment for you to just to tinker with the technology. If you have any questions, uh, I will be here. And also, feel free to find me on Twitter. Thank you.